How do you get from a cancer on conservatism to a talented guy who ought to be president? Um, we go through a process uh, in the uh, Republican side of things, so selecting our nominees. And, and as you'll recall, back in uh, 2011, 2012, I probably said some harsh things about Mitt Romney. Uh, he said some harsh things about me. We are competitors, and so the rhetoric uh, is in the uh, heat of battle. Uh, it's in the chaos of a uh, presidential bid. And, um, you know, I've said some harsh things about John Sharp when we were running against each other as lieutenant governor. And subsequently, uh, you know, we got that business all taken care of, and, and uh, we worked together. And that's, you know, uh, if, if no one doesn't understand that, then they don't understand how our process of elections work. We compete, and then we let bygones be bygones. Here's what's most important. Where this country finds itself in a year from now, or two years from now, or 50 years from now, because the next president of the United States has a real possibility. We know they're going to put one Supreme Court justice on there to take Justice Scalia's place. And the president may choose two more. And I'll suggest to you, when the choice is Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, that becomes abundantly easy for me to make that decision. Speaking of working with people, um, there's been a rumor that you would entertain be, uh, being vice president of that. I will entertain helping my country. I don't have any idea what that may entail, what that form may be in. Uh, I got in the presidential race in 2011, reluctantly, but I did it because I love my country. I did it because I think I still have some things to give to my country. My 30 years of, of public service in the myriad of areas of which I have, have served, uh, the least of which is not being the chief executive of the 12th largest economy in the world, in the state of Texas as its governor, that is a set of experiences that will serve this country. And if Donald Trump says, Perry, let's talk about you helping in this role, I'm open to it. Governor, would you advise, uh, as a fellow Texas Republican and someone who supported Ted Cruz, would you advise Senator, Senator Cruz to support Donald Trump? Listen, <laughs> Ted Cruz is one of the smartest people I've ever been around in my life. Uh, and he has uh, the intellect and, and uh, the character uh, to make the right decision on his timetable. Um, I think any of us that have ever been through one of these things before, there's a little bit of raw feelings. It takes us just a little bit of time to kind of get over some of it. Uh, and I certainly am willing, and I think uh, uh, Donald Trump is willing to give those competitors the time to, to think this through. To, uh, but at, at the end of the day, we're going to support the Republican nominee. I mean, that's the, uh, I, I would be stunned if we roll in here and, uh, mid-October and November, if there's not uh, a powerful wall, a wave of Republicans, uh, if Donald Trump is our nominee, and, and, and you know, I, I, I guess you could argue it today that there's still an avenue. I have come to the conclusion that there is not an avenue now that's going to be Mr. Trump. So what and Governor, I'm going to support him. What do you think of Trump now? Do you think he's qualified to be president? Well, I, listen, I've never thought that, that, that there wasn't a um, – an individual in there that was uh, highly talented. Uh, as late as this last uh, week, uh, I was on one of the major channels, and I said he's one of the most talented people I've ever seen. Uh, he knows how to market. He knows how to brand. And uh, he has, <laughs> he's vanquished 16 pretty capable men and women. Uh, so from the standpoint of his being capable to lead, to be able to uh, have the vision to take this country forward. I think it's important to have a president who understands economically how to move this country forward, how to build our military back up, uh, an individual who knows how to govern. Uh, he said himself that those first two he feels very comfortable with. The third one, uh, he's going to need some people who have great experience. I suggest that that is a clear indication that he understands what he knows, understands what he doesn't know, and is willing to bring people in and listen to them. And I think that's the, uh, the, the most important uh, trait that, uh, that, that he will have to exhibit 
I mean, that's yet to be seen, but I feel comfortable that uh, uh, he will indeed do that. Governor, Governor. I appreciate it. I haven't. Uh, we hadn't had a conversation in probably six months, but that's I'm, I'm quite capable of getting along here without having talked to him, and I bet him with me for some time. Um, he still has work to do. Uh, I'm going to be doing what I can to help elect Republican candidates uh, across the board right here in the state of Texas and in, in our state Senate races. Uh, you know, I'm actively involved in uh, Don. Buckingham, Dr. Buckingham, as she runs for the Senate. Uh, I'm helping some people outside of the state of Texas as well. So um, I'm pretty sure Donald Trump's capable of taking care of himself. Governor, has the Republican Party changed in the last 15 years? And if so, how? Oh, well, we don't have enough time. Sure. <laughs> you you got to remember, I grew up in the Democrat Party. And I saw the Democrat Party uh, make a, a, a sea change uh, over the, you know, in, in, the, in the 60s and the 70s and even in the 80s. So, you know, I think political parties are always in a state of, of uh, fluidity, if you will. I think they're always, you know, moving from one place to the other. So the answer is sure, they change. The Democrat Party changes. I mean, come on, Bernie Sanders? Uh, so, but the, the core principles of this country don't change. And I think that's what we have to keep our eyes on, is that that Constitution uh, doesn't change, uh, or very, very, very rarely. Uh, so, um, yeah, the, the people change, the philosophies change, uh, the Republican Party, uh, it, it, it moves in this current, uh, the Democrat Party moves in this current, people find where they're comfortable. There seems to me to be comfort with Donald Trump in the Republican primary process at this particular point in time. Last question. Last question. Last question. You're it, Rudy. When uh, you and I spoke right before you left the office, we talked about your portrait and what you hope people will think about when they come into the Capitol years from now, tomorrow, and look at your portrait and, and, and think about you. Yeah. What do you hope that they will think about when they look at Rick Perry? Let me refer you back to absolutely elegant words that my wife said. Uh, I don't think there has been a point put on this day any better than what my wife said and if you will go back and take a look at those most elegant and poignant words about what she wanted that to be I could not say it any better thank you all for coming God bless you